to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The journey of becoming only happens in that wilderness. The journey of becoming does not happen when you are taking coffee and sipping. No, 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 no. It's a painful journey. For many years in your life, I, I, let me repeat it again. No matter the kind of leverage you have, if it is God you are seeking and the, his kingdom, there will be a level where nobody's sermon will really be able to matter to you again. You will have to be the preacher and the prophet of your destiny at that point. If it has not happened to you, I'm informing you ahead of time. Because for some of you, maybe you are about to enter that season. Remember what I taught you about trainings. You have been receiving the training of one who protects. So when you see warriors, you say, oh dear, I pity these people. Now you are about to begin the training of a warrior. Go and go to NDA and see how they train military men. Sometimes these men are asked to roll inside mud. You, you will say this is dehumanizing. But they are preparing them. And they kick them. Kick them again. Yes, sir. Ah. I fear no evil by the water still my soul my heart will trust in you my heart will trust that though I walk through the valley low I fear Even when I don't trust in it, I can trust in you. Even when I no longer trust in the future. Do you know there are times people can ask you, how is that future? And sincerely, if you are to be honest, you don't even know what to say again. There are times people, are, are you still in the ministry? Will you still continue? If you are honest, there are times you don't have an answer. Hear the word of the Lord. When you cannot trust in it, trust in him. When the boat can no longer carry you, trust in the person who is sleeping in that boat. My heart will trust in you, Lord. My heart will lean on you. My heart will cry to you, Lord. My heart hear me there are realms you get to where no matter how strong you are your tears will not ask you again it will come by itself you will stand there courageous sometimes maybe helping others through their storms but there are times the tears will say I've tried I've waited for five years it will have to come Jesus the miracle worker who raised others from the dead on his way to becoming that king of kings and lord of lords in experience the Bible says he wept, he prayed. I wonder what he was saying. The Bible gives us a little and he says he repeated it again. Father, if it be thy will. Let me tell you, there are times that this journey to destiny is very hard. Someone who came to marry you and he's not serious with God. You would have said yes. You would have married a wrong person, but you would have been free. You said no 10 years ago until now, 10 years later. And people will see you and say, you are a stupid girl. You would have simply married that unbeliever. 
you stood expecting God to honor you and it's 10 years now what do you do when what people are saying about you is true though I walk through the valley organize the crusade they told you there is witchcraft within that territory that if you organize that crusade it can cost you your life and you still went souls were saved and on your way returning there was an accident how do you explain that you stood on the crusade ground and you shouted and you told them Jesus heals let me tell you this when what you believe is not yet your reality here is what to do Stand. 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 I'm prophesying, no? I'm not preaching. Some of you in the night while you are sleeping, you will hear the voice of this preacher again telling you, remember, God spoke through him. Stand. You are about to compromise. Stand. You are about to abort destiny. Whereas heaven is clapping for you for your stamina and your endurance. Stand. 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 Kali Katosiata. Stand. Politician, stand. Man of God, stand. Remember, nobody has risen as a revivalist, a revivalist in your village. Stand. You are the one God is counting on. It is painful, but stand. Stand. Let me sing one song for you and then we'll wrap up. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, lifter of men. I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men. I know a man of God, very simple man of God, he's gone to be with the Lord now. Great healing man of God, loved God with all his heart. And one day, they discovered that he had cancer. And initially, he shrugged it off and waved it off. The naysayers laughed and said, thank God. What happens when your naysayers find a reason to rejoice over you? Was it not the psalmist that said, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? He says, O oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me. Listen, that man's health began to deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate and deteriorate. And I saw the way it shook the family. This, uh, this is a believing family that loved Jesus. And finally, he couldn't stand again. And he had to go. Mm. Please hear me. The Lord sent me to bring this message. These are not popular things, But let me submit to you by God. Becoming is very difficult. Becoming. Becoming an anointed man of God. One day God will give you an instruction to fast for one month, one year, one week. There are levels of consecration that will look as if God wants to kill you. This anointing you see is not just by laying on of hands. So 
believe me you want to speak over people and swing open the gates of their destinies <laughs> there are sacrifices but those who become are those who must be willing to know that God is in this and I will go all the way I will go the way all the way all the way there are missionaries who are in Nigeria today are in parts of Africa they literally left their people left their comfort some of them resigned from jobs as successful people and they answered the call Abba my people except you are motivated by something greater than the comfort of the now you cannot make that sacrifice some of the men of God you see that sometimes we abuse and insult you don't know the things they left to serve the Lord for many men of God, especially in Africa, it's not like they were total failures and they did not know what to do with their lives. Some of them were mandated by God to give up things. And they stood to bear the cross like fools. Some of them even unto death. Please sit down. Let's wrap up. Koinonia is quiet, but it is the truth. Let's wrap up. But the people that do know their God, this is the scripture we're discussing. We have looked at knowledge, the demands to have knowledge, the demands to be transformed. Now, watch this. This is the last step of the success equation. And very few people ever get to this third realm because the pain of overcoming the realm of being transformed, most people cannot endure to the end. A few walk their way to the finish line, but sadly, they just stop at the level of transformation. And that's why possibilities don't manifest in their lives. Do exploits. James chapter 1. Doing is the last step as far as destiny actualization is concerned action is demanded until and unless at some point in your life action is taken you will never be able to see results james 1 22. please give it to us let's hurry up so we can pray it says but be ye doers of the word not hearers only deceiving yourselves reading to 25 it says for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he is he was he says but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty listen carefully and continue therein he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word let's finish the remaining what will happen to that man he said this man shall be blessed in his deeds action action the word exploits now i'm not talking about the verb there is the verb exploit right which means to selfishly take advantage of another for profit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the noun, exploits. And that means I wrote here, notable, outstanding, or heroic accomplishments. Exploits. Notable, comma, outstanding, or heroic accomplishments. Do not forget what we are looking at, the road map. To a triumphant destiny that's the topic we're dealing with tonight and well considering for our text daniel 11 and 32 the b part the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits we're bringing out the revelation from the statement know be and do we said this represent the three the tripartite junctions as far as the road map to an excelling life is concerned knowledge number two b becoming transformation now we're looking finally at doing write this down action requires courage the first demand for doing is that you must be courageous 
action requires courage numbers chapter 13 and verse 30 numbers 13 30 action requires courage and Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go up at once we heard the word we understand what God has said we've taken our time to understand the demands he says let us go up at once and possess it it takes going up to possess not just talking about it not just meditating on it hearing the information and the instruction is wonderful meditating upon it until you believe is wonderful but if and when you are done with becoming the next thing is to go up at once and possess it for we are well able we are well able to overcome it deuteronomy chapter 20 from verse 1 to 4 this scripture has blessed me for many many years pay attention as i read deuteronomy 21 to 4 we're wrapping up when thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seeth horses chariots and a people more than thou he says be not afraid of them for the lord thy god is with thee which brought thee up from out of the land of egypt reading to four and it shall be when ye are come nigh to the battle men of god remember you have a duty to approach and speak unto the people because battle is a moment of fierceness there must be a system of encouragement and it is given to the men and the women of god the priests you are the ones who will speak to the people verse 3 and ye shall say unto them hear o koinonia ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies let not your heart faint he will come and save you he will come and save you say to the weary ones your god will surely come he will come and save my god will come and save you he will come and save you lift up your eyes to him you will arise again he will come and save let not your hearts faint fear not and do not tremble neither be ye terrified because of them for for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and save you. Please hear me. If anyone tells you action does not require courage, that person lied to you. Action requires courage. You are touring virgin dimensions that you may never have gone there. It takes courage. Number two, action requires persistence and resilience do exploits those who do exploits are people who are persistent and resilient hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 hebrews 6 15 please and so after he had patiently endured the he being abraham he obtained the promise galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 Galatians 6 and verse 9 it says and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we will reap if we faint not it takes persistence and it takes resilience the first time we had our crusade gauging by the standard today you would not call it a very successful meeting because when debt many things went you know with very few people I'm not sure we were up to 50 in that entire theater for the crusade after weeks of praying and preparing you would look and say this person is a failure these people are failures and the very next as we were returning God gave an instruction again to do another one God for you he will act as if he didn't see what happened to you are we together you gave somebody a lift, he stole your phone. By the next day, God will say, make sure you carry two people and bless them. Action requires persistence and resilience. Number three, 
Action requires conviction. 2 Timothy 1.12 Action requires conviction. You will never be able to act until you are full of conviction. For the which cause I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, he said, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Let me tell you the truth. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. The strength of your conviction determines the speed of your action. You see why transformation is very important? Because as you begin to push against these walls by faith, it will take conviction. I submit to you by the God of heaven, even if I came to Abuja here and Koinonia started and I failed, I would not return back in shame. One thing for sure I would have done is I would have gone for a retreat to verify and re-verify again. God, is it my mind? Am I just acting in the flesh or is this true? Can I tell you, there are many things that are not working now in your life, but it does not mean that God is not there. All you need to do is to stay pushing with resilience. Resilience and persistence. Number four, action requires unbending focus. Action requires unbending focus. 3.13 Philippians. 3.13 action requires unbending focus brethren i count myself not myself to have apprehended but this one thing somebody say one thing one more time say one thing when you are focusing on 10 things you don't have focus it is usually one thing at a time there has to be something driving you this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the things that are before me, I press. Proverbs 4.25. Unbending focus. Proverbs 4.25. Unbending focus. It says, let thy eyes look right on. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. That means you can't run. How many of you have seen people who are running the finals of a 100 meter dash? And whether someone is insulting you or someone is clapping for you, you don't turn back. Your eyes is set on the finish line. Part of the training of a winner is that the moment you start looking, ah, you are clapping for me. When it has to do with the race of life, both commendation and criticism can distract. You need to remain focused. On bending focus. Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. Action. Do exploits. Doing exploits requires unbending focus. Jesus said unto them, No man having put his hand on the or to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Focus. Remember Lot's wife. The Bible warns us about the wife of Lot. She was already on her way out of Sodom and Gomorrah with the warning not to turn back. It says, and if any draw back, Hebrews 10, I believe 38 or so. And if any draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Hallelujah. If any draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Finally, doing exploits requires patience. Hebrews 6, 12, patience. Hebrews 6 12 and that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience that's what it takes to inherit the promises first Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 we're wrapping up first Peter 5 and verse 10 but the God of all grace who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus listen it says after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect entire now establish you strengthen you and then settle you after you have suffered a while and remain pushing praying pressing acting he says he will make you entire perfect establish you strengthen you settle you Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 he says for I reckon 8 18 
that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Action requires courage. Action, doing exploits, requires persistence and resilience in the face of negative situations, discouraging situations. Action requires conviction. Action requires unbending focus. And finally, action requires patience. Now, let's look at Daniel 11.32 as we prepare to pray. Now you will understand this scripture. But the people that do know, they shall be and they shall do. This is my message tonight. The roadmap to a triumphant destiny, to a triumphant life, involves knowing becoming and doing in that order you can't do without becoming you can't become without knowing so let me read it this way for you to do exploits you need to be strong and for you to be strong you need to know in this case they are God if you ever see anybody doing exploits know that that person must have been strong he became to do and for that person to have become are we together that person must have submitted himself to knowledge a naive medical student goes to the university as a school living certificate holder with the potential of becoming a doctor what happens knowledge knowledge they keep pumping knowledge for over six, seven years, and the medical doctor is evolving out of the ordinary person. There is a becoming happening. And do you know within the limit of his practice, he will not be allowed to do certain things because he's still becoming. Sooner or later, he gets accustomed to the medical practice, and then by the time he's done, he's now given liberty to start doing. And then the process reverses, uh, the process continues again. Even though he is a graduate, he is not called a consultant. Is that correct? Knowledge starts again. Another version of becoming happens and then he can do exploits. Greater knowledge, greater becoming, greater exploits. Small knowledge, small becoming, small exploits. High level knowledge, high level transformation, high level exploits. The choice is yours. I said before you life and death. I set before you a mediocre destiny and a life of kingdom exploits that brings great glory to God and dignity to you and posterity, judging you faithful by reason of your finishing strong. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. I remind you again as I started that in destiny, you must know how to fight. You must know how to finish. You must know how to keep. Please rise up on your feet. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change. You're the lifter of men. The lifter of men. If you can, for one minute, may I request that you hold the hand of someone just close to you. We're about to pray. Please, let's minimize movement. There, let me just make a very important announcement. Please, as much as possible, avoid walking out before the service is over. It's spiritual indiscipline. If you have stayed for no matter how long, the extra five minutes you spend will not change anything, not your going home, not whatever. He's in discipline. Are we together? In many assemblies, they close the door, they do whatever. We don't have to do that. Please. There is nothing that is such an emergency. You're rushing to get a car. You're rushing to do this. One prophetic word in closing the service may be your word. God can reserve your word to the end. I notice that every time we make altar calls, you see, once we're done, many people are, it's an attitude of a baby Christian. 
And for some of you who do that, some of you are pastors, you are leaders, avoid that. Hallelujah. Yes. Let us close with decency and then you leave. It does not take more than a minute to do an altar call, more than a minute or two to say a prayer. I just needed to say this. Don't do it in Koinonia. Don't do it anywhere except for very specific reasons. Maybe you're a guest minister and you need to leave or some kind of thing. There is a system that allows you, but ordinarily don't do that. This is part of the kingdom culture that we must learn. Hallelujah. For some of you, you can be living whereas the people God brought you to church to meet after church are there. But because you are rushing, you are rushing into nowhere. It shouldn't be so. Please. I love you and that's why I want you to receive. It's a culture that you should not practice. It is very, very wrong. Whether you are outside, you are inside, discipline yourself as much as possible. If you have endured through two, three, four hours, five more minutes, I'm not sure. If it's an emergency, that's fine. But aside that, please discipline yourself. So stay and join the prayer and let us pray. I owe a responsibility to teach you the culture of the kingdom. And in this house, we're a house of order and we're a house of honor. So even when you invite people to come, please let them learn. We don't believe in policing people and using force, but revelation should upgrade you to a realm of maturity. Are we together? So we'll pray just two prayer points tonight. Number one, you're going to cry to God and say, Father, I obtain grace to contend for knowledge and the transformation that comes with that knowledge and then the grace to act. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying from the depth of your heart. Shalika paroska dibaleyasa. Lift your voice to Jesus. Thank you, Father. The people that do know, I obtain grace to know. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. I obtain grace to know. In the name of Jesus, I receive the meekness that helps me to know. I obtain grace to ask questions that help me to know. I obtain grace to be willing to sacrifice my time, my energy, my resources to buy the truth so that I will know. I obtain grace to place value on knowledge and to retain superior knowledge. Now pray on becoming. I contend for the grace to become before doing. I recognize that this is not the best version of me. I lay aside my current failures, my current successes, and I press in the name of Jesus, becoming a greater spiritual version, a greater financial version. A greater intellectual version I upgrade my references kingdom worthy models and references that guide and challenge my transformation in the name of Jesus I give up age-long limiting on scriptural anti-destiny beliefs and I embrace superior beliefs in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to face and endure the consequences that come with growth, that come with transformation. Now pray for exploits. I receive grace to be courageous. Courageous. Even when it does not look like it. To hold on to the word of God and to believe. I receive grace to be persistent and resilient. I receive grace to be a person, a man of God, a businessman, a family man, a politician with convictions. Convictions that provide the energy, the drive to take action. I receive grace to be of unbending focus. Unbending focus. And in the name of Jesus, I receive the patience, the staying power to remain until the word of God manifests in my life. For in Jesus name we pray. Last prayer point. I want you to declare that your prophetic destiny, the place that has been earmarked for your prophetic destiny 
if it requires a fight declare that you are a victor in Christ if it is a race require declare that you run with the speed he says he says he makes my feet like hinds feet that you run and redeem time and your bishopric that you will keep it and none will take open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus the grace to fight a good fight of faith the grace to run with the speed of 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 a gazelle the speed of 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 a, the fastest animal to run with it in the name of Jesus and with the strength of an ox the grace to keep the faith to keep the call to remain to stay to be strong till the end for in Jesus name I pray now very quickly our time is up there are people here who are yet to surrender their lives and their everything to Jesus once you heard the word coming the Holy Spirit began to speak to you telling you that you need to make your ways right or you are here and you are saying apostle I remember giving my life to Christ but right now I need a rededication any of those two categories whether you are inside remember the first person to know is God not just your destiny helpers not just an information the people that know they are God and you're saying apostle I cannot really say I know my God this is eternal life John 17 and verse 3 that they may know you the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent I want to make this altar call right now our time is up as I count one to five, I want you to leave your seat, whether you are inside or outside. I want you to come and stand here very quickly. Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. And don't wait for someone to come before you follow them to come. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I begin my counting now. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. God bless you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. If you're coming rush please come to Jesus he's able to give you a new beginning you can start afresh again Apostle I'm not sure if I'm saved or not come and join them you can have the assurance of salvation this night God bless you God bless you God bless you I'm about to lead them to pray so if you are coming please run you may need to double up thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to salute you for making this courageous decision. We just thought that it takes courage to take action. And you have taken a very noble action. This is the wisest decision that any man can make under the sun. Thank you for the courage to have made this decision. May I request that you please lift your right hand. That includes those who are watching from home, those who are watching by way of television, even by way of a rebroadcast. It is never too late to surrender your all and your everything to Jesus. Please lift your right hand and say this after me. Let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart. Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need to know you. I declare that I cannot help myself, but I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name the Lord bless and honor your prayer and I declare by the authority of Scripture that you are bona fide recipients of eternal life you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus name may I please request that you follow the counselors you're in front here they are by my right may God bless you let's appreciate them very quickly dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye